What's good, everybody? We're back with another reaction video, and we'll be reacting to Dark Phoenix official trailer. Now, this is, of course, from the X Men franchise when it was still with uh, 20th Century Fox. Now, as you all may know, uh, Disney has bought out the pretty much the movie side of uh, 20th Century Fox because they, they said they want to focus more on news and sports stuff like that so they're selling off all their movie assets pretty much and disney bought them up everyone knows that whole back and forth disney had with comcast thing and disney won that uh that uh duel they little had and uh now they're going to be integrated into the mcu as far as what uh I can't remember if it was Bob Iger or Kevin Feige said that, but I think Bob Iger said it. But he's going to put Kevin Feige in charge of it, of doing it. Which makes sense because Kevin Feige is in charge of the Marvel Studios aspect of Disney. So that would make sense to put him in charge of how to integrate the X Men or all the Marvel properties that Fox had into the MCU. I think the X-Men, the whole mutant thing, I think that'd be very difficult to integrate into into the already existing MCU, especially with the history the the you know, the X Men have and all that stuff and it just to, it would just seem unless you do something where it just starts like mute like kinda like what you they do with like vampires or something like they no one really knows they exist but then something happens that causes a like uh, uh, influx of information about vampires actually existing, and they can do that with the mutants. Because I've seen people say, "Oh, they can just open a portal." There's two different dimensions and all this stuff, kind of like what they do on, uh, well, not kind of exactly what they do on uh, the CW, the DC shows, where they have like alternate universes, and they say, "Oh, well," because I remember before it was like hard to go back and forth between the dimensions. And they needed like you know the flash to to speed through and get to a certain speed. I think like light speed or fast and light speed. I can't remember, but to jump through dimensions. But now, I remember the last time I saw that that I think the previous the last the last crossover, they had a uh, I think uh, forgetting the guy's name, the vibe. I can't remember his actual name. And it's just been a while since I was watching those shows, but. Uh, I started missing them because of work, and then I just couldn't catch up, and then I just stopped watching because I couldn't catch up. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of the same thing that happened with The Walking Dead. But uh, sometimes I watch little clips of them though online, and I remember he gave her some device where she could now just jump between uh, dimensions whenever she wants to now too, just like because Vibe can do the you know the vibration thing and open up dimensions flash can do it now they just made some which i guess makes sense you can as time goes on they perfect the technology they're like oh i created something where you can now just jump between dimensions you don't need a speedster or vibe to come get you and bring you back so and, and plus is that's time consuming it costs money they got right i think of how they do it each time and so there's a agent just it makes sense that the technology would get better and they would just be able to do it but I don't like that for some reason in this aspect for Marvel to do that with the X-Men universe. The Fantastic Four would be easy. You just say, hey, they exist now. They, something happened, and now you have the Fantastic Four. But the X-Men, like I said, I think they should just do kind of like what they do with vampires and everything. What they're going to have to do with Blade, if they introduce him, would say, hey, you know, vampires exist now. Now, now even in... I think even in Marvel Comics, vampires is not like, it's not like a well-known thing. Like, oh, vampires, is a, vampirism is a real thing. It is still like in myth, you know, and stuff like that. So, but, you know, heroes and stuff have dealt with vampires. Stuff like Because even DC, like they have vampires, demons, witches, warlocks, like all types of shit. But they're not well-known. I mean, you see them, the heroes fight them all the time, so you would think everyone knows that they exist. But no, they're, they're not publicly known where, oh yeah, this person you made might be a vampire. <laughs> you know, it's not like that. 
But uh, I think that's what they're going to have to do with the X-Men. Uh, but the only thing about this is if they try to keep all the cast members instead of rebooting and introducing them into the MCU, all this stuff that's happened in the in the, the you know the history of the movies, you know a lot of stuff was big and well known stuff. Plus, in the X Men universe, people know about mutants, so it's a well known thing that you know everyone knows about mutants. People been knowing about mutants since I think what the fifties, sixties. I can't remember which one. One uh, uh, first class, but um. What 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 time period that took, that took place in the sixties? But um, people have known about mutants in that world. So if you just take that, just try to just interject it, be like, well, how come you know there hasn't been? Unless you're saying like it hasn't been an issue from, I guess you could say the nineties to now, because I mean now they introduce in the nineties because of a uh, because of a uh, Captain Marvel. But before, it was just usually like flashbacks to, to specific events like when Tony's parents got killed or Captain America and stuff like that. They didn't talk about mutants. But now, since you introduced in the 90s and that Captain Marvel was in there, I would think they would have to at least bring it up if they're just going to try to cram what Fox has done into the MCU. But anyway, enough on that. Let's watch this trailer. Let's see what they get. I think it's gonna be pretty good. I've seen people kind of clowning on it. Sitting from the comments I read, mainly it's gonna be because it's not in the MCU. But I think Fox has done a pretty good job. I mean, they've had some hit and misses, but so has Marvel. But uh, let's get into it. All right, here we go. You are not broken. Mind is a fragile thing. It takes only the slightest tap to tip it in the wrong direction. This is the end. Charles, what did you do? I had to keep her stable. I protected her. From the truth? Oh, shit. There's another word for that. Well, she's. He, I think he needed to do that. They give him, they give him a lot of shit. But I think he needed to do that because this chick is the way she is now. Like, oh, she could have gradually, she could have gradually became evil then too. Like, she's changing. To what? We didn't come here looking for answers. She's a vampire. Change. Oh. I always thought telekinesis Pain. were cool, but I'd rather have telepathy. Pain. That's all coming out of us. Jean lost control. Is she still our friend? This is your fault, Charles. The world is on the brink. I'm How about sorry. we fix the problem, not the blame? You're always sorry, Charles. And there's always a speech. And nobody cares. <laughs> Let's Magneto do. has no room to talk about anybody. Don't do this. Like, you have no room They're to criticize anybody. <laughs> I've seen evil. This Dragon Ball Z is just yelling at the screen. I'm looking at it now. See, I said she's a vampire. I like that music. I like that music. That was kind of cool. You know, um, that, um, that looked pretty good. That looked really good. Um, it looked, I mean, I, I, I know, like I said, I know Fox. They can do really good things, and they've done good things with the X Men franchise. Like, I like how they just kind of just, they, they, they try to focus on one movie. I noticed that when they, tried to do like a cinematic type universe it started to lose its appeal you know like Marvel they have their, they pretty much have their cinematic universe on point like they know exactly what they want to do and they try to stick to a specific way they're doing it you know and when they and it's like anything that doesn't work 
they cut their shit out like a cancer. Like, or if they think it can be salvaged, they keep doing like iron fists. Like, they're like, this can be salvaged. And they already have plans to do it, to continue and, and you know, interject him with the other heroes in the Netflix move in Netflix TV show so they like we going and they they did a better job with season two still not great but it's better you know that's what we want to see progression now like some like in humans people hated that so much they just cut that shit off like like a rotten arm they just <laughs> they like get that shit out of here you know and they movies I mean they've had you know I would say I, I would say the only movies I guess that I didn't like was that I really did not like was um Iron Man three and no it had nothing to do with the Mandarin because you was the first people who try to defend that movie and say, Oh well you just didn't like the Mandarin no, I could care less about the Mandarin. That whole overall movie I just didn't like. Uh, I'm not gonna go into great detail but the different things, but overall movie I just didn't like. Uh Thor the Dark World didn't like the first Captain America movie I thought was okay but you watch that a couple times I think you don't need to ever watch it again um, that and Iron Man 2 I thought Age of Ultron was okay that was I mean, a little bit better than uh, Captain America and, pretty, and the event no, not Avengers but the uh Guardians of the Galaxy movies. The first Guardians of the Galaxy I didn't like. The second one I thought was okay. Which is funny because a lot of people love the first one. Just are either okay or don't like the second one. I do not like the first one. And I thought the second one was just okay. Like I watched that twice. I just wanted to watch each movie twice just to make sure that I'm um, giving it is just due. Is that whether I like it or don't? What I don't I don't like just oh I hated this movie I only saw it once you know I seen movies that I had a hard time getting through and I turned it off like 30 minutes into it but then I go back and I watch it because I'm like maybe it was just me maybe I didn't feel good or it just wasn't feeling at the time so I watched it again and then I'm like no no this movie sucked that wasn't it was me but <laughs> but the one thing about Fox that I liked that they did with the X-Men they started just kind of throwing continuity out the window. Look, let's just make a good movie now. If we want the next movie, like to be in con, like what they do, what they started doing is trying to do the X Men movies kind of in a continuity, but they did origin stories or well, they only did one real origin story, which X Men Origins, which wasn't very good. It was it's something to just pop in when you drunk I think. <laughs> just over you were a bunch of people and you you're more so talking than actually paying a whole lot of attention to what you're watching but um they tried to stay in some continuity with the x-men movies but when they did like wolverine movies they were just like you know we can do whatever we don't need to be in exact continuity with fall into continuity with the x-men movies it just kind of just be whatever type of thing which i thought was fun i mean they it, they tried to concentrate on just making a good movie. Not like I said, it didn't pan out all that well with uh, Wolverine Origins because, as you know, in that it just it just didn't it just it didn't I don't know it just didn't it didn't feel good. All the acting wasn't great. Uh, like I said, it's a fun movie to just pop in. Like if you're you just kind of want to be distracted, or you want to put something on while you fall asleep. Uh, but that's about it for Wolverine. But their movies, I think they they focus more on just trying to make a good movie. They try, especially when they see what what people complained about the previous one. It's okay, we got that. Let's not do those same mistakes. Let's learn from our mistakes. That's what they're trying to do. Which I think that's what DC's trying to do now. They like. We tried this, people didn't like it. Well, I, I, I would say a lot of people didn't like it. I don't know about the majority of that, but enough people didn't like it that it's cast this bad image on our property. So now we have to redo that. We have to change it. That's why people's like, well, won't they stick one tone? And I was, I'm like, 
Well, they started with one tone, and people didn't like it. Like, a lot of people didn't like it. So they have to change the tones of the movie because they have, these movies have to be profitable for them to keep making movies. Now, people are why are they changing the tone? Now, if you were a fan of the tone of the, like, like it's a Superman, or Man of Steel, or Batman vs. Superman, stuff like that, and they changed the tone, even me, I'm a fan. I, I like those movies. But at the same time, I can understand why they changed the tone because they're not they're not getting the overall uh, positive appeal. They're not appealing to enough people. So they have to change it. They have to, that is a business. I think people forget about the business side of movies. <laughs> and they just think about the... They say, well, it's just art, or just just do whatever the director tells you, like just or the writer. Like, don't don't change the person's script or have anybody rewrite it, or tell the director we want to do this instead of doing this. It's when the, when the, when the movie's good, it's fine, you know. But when the movie turns out bad, you know, it's it's interfere the, the studio's interfering with them. Now, some now I'm not saying that that doesn't happen, where studios interfere too much and come in there and just. Start telling them to cut this out, cut that out. They're like, like was Zack Snyder and uh, was that? Uh, was it Justice League? No, it was uh, the well, the first one was Batman vs Superman, and they they told I'm sure the studio told him how long that movie needed to be. Like this, yeah, we can't go over this. If he comes in with a four hour movie. Well, it was either four hours or three and a half hours. Or something. It was it was a very long. Like thing that he the movie he brought to them, and they say, "Well, you got to condense this down." It's up to him to you know to edit and cut out certain scenes that aren't needed. Now, they seem to edit and cut out scenes that, if you look at the ultimate version or edition of that movie, needed because it created either plot holes or you didn't understand why this happened, why that happened, because they cut out certain parts that led up to it, so you so you could understand what happened. To me, that's on the fault of the director, because it's not like that. Oh, right, just make the movie, and he'd be like, "Okay, it can be how long does it need to be?" Oh, just just make it. We'll decide that later. Then that's on the studio because if then he brings them a, a you know three hour plus movie, and they're like, "We we can't do that because we can't put it in enough theaters to make us you know the amount of money that we want to make because you know theaters going." to limit how many movies, how many showings they have because of how long the movie is. They can't have you taking up all their theaters because they got other movies in there. They sure you have long ass movies. So they like, so now if that was the situation where they told, oh, do whatever, you know, and we'll, now, and I would still say it was kind of his responsibility, but no, I need a specific time or at least, a, a, you know, a, a rounded time to like, hey, no more than three hours or something like that or two and a half or something now if it's a little bit over two and a half then you know we'll make do but if it's three hours an extra 30 minutes like you said two and a half is 30 minutes and then we need to cut this down now that i would say that would be on the director because he wasn't he didn't get he didn't ask for clear direction he asked any questions but they told him how long that move was supposed to be and he just give them a long ass thing that they say and well now you need to cut it down and he has to cut it down that's his fault he didn't do what they told him to do yeah. but it could be either we don't fully know us that you know the whole story because a lot of people just assume and you know and it's a lot of people just jump on either we you know it's marvel or warner brothers uh you know whoever they usually jump on that particular uh, studio rather than saying what's the, you know looking and see is plenty to blame to go around and they both didn't collab enough with one another to get a good understanding and then when you start cutting like I said cutting out stuff you can't cut out key moments that they lead up to a moment you can't say well this is how it starts and we had this to indicate you know where it was going to lead to but then you cut out this part so you just have a start and it ends or what it lead, what it led up to, but you don't know what happened to make it lead up to that. Like the whole, uh, you remember the uh, the scene where Superman saved Lois, I think in the Middle East somewhere, and she, uh, and they then they tried to frame Superman for that saying that oh he uses heat vision 
to kill those people. Now, now the, the, the thing was, we didn't know that it was his heat vision. Like, if you look at the theatric cut, like, we didn't know it was his heat vision. It was just like he killed those people. And I was like, he killed people with And I was like, with his heat vision? So I remember in the movies thinking that. Like, cause, like if he punched them, I was like, <laughs> it'd be obvious. Like, okay, it wasn't his heat vision. Like, he beat them up. That you could, I mean, How would you know Superman? Unless the whole body was exploded. But even then, you, it, I was like, even then, you couldn't really prove that. But they... But then in the Ultimate Edition, if I remember correctly, they were saying that they shot some, they, they, they had special bullets that they shot, and they heated up, and I guess inside of, they kind of mimic his heat vision, so it looked like he just, that he burned all these people's heat vision, or burned through them with his heat vision, so they just blaming him for that, because there was no, then it was just he said, she said, because no one actually saw him do it. Because pretty much everyone was dead except Lois and uh, all the men that were there were dead. So, except for, of course, Lex Luthor's people. But that was the whole point. But then they cut that part out about, uh, they, they, they would just say, well, Superman killed him. And I was like, well, how do you know that, well, what evidence do you have that he did this happen? That he needs to even defend himself. You know, it, it was just, it, that was just one particular thing about that. I guess, you know, pissed a lot of people off or turned a lot of people off. Because like, they're like, I don't understand this, I don't understand that. You know. But anyway, getting off on a whole different uh, rant type thing. But this looked, looked good to me. Of course, we haven't seen the movie, it's just a trailer. This trailer, this movie could suck ass and <laughs> we don't know. But hopefully it's good. The trailer looks good. And then they, I'm um, like I said, I'm curious how they're going to interject this into the MCU, unless they decide to uh, reboot it and then just start from scratch. But we'll see. Anywho, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed my reaction. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see ya. Whoo! And I'll see y'all later. Peace.